The purpose of this video is to introduce you to chemical reactions. And there are thousands and millions of chemi chemical reactions out there, but in basic chemistry, we really focus on five main types. And these are just really common types of chemical reactions that most beginning chemistry students, and honestly, most college students are going to work with, unless you are actually majoring in chemistry or going into organic chemistry, these are typically the types of reactions that you're going to see. And the first thing I want to tell you about chemical reactions is keep it simple. Um, you'll see a lot of things and you're not going to know what they are. You're not going to know anything about them and that can make these really overwhelming. But what I want you to think about is that they're just recipes. Just like any recipe you would use in your kitchen. Um, for example, let's say you have a cookie recipe and it calls for two eggs, one cup of sugar, two cups of flour, a cup of chocolate chips, and that yields 24 cookies. You have all of your ingredients, these are your reactants, and then you have your products, what you're making. And Honestly, when you make cookies, you're actually making more than just a cookie. You, um, When you open that oven, if you've got glasses on, they may fog up because some steam is coming out. So that means maybe some water molecules have been released. Um, so sometimes when you're cooking visually, you may kind of see one product, but really you may have more than one. And the same thing is true in a chemical reaction. We could have more than one thing on the left and we can have more than one thing on the right. So the first thing I want you to remember are the, the main parts, which are your reactants on the left, your products on the right, and then this arrow, which is your yield sign. Now, um, we're going to just look at these two reactions real quick and I'll point some other things out. Remembering that we divide the reaction in half, Right here in the middle, um, you can see that we're obeying the law of conservation of mass, and that means we have the same number of atoms on each side. So for example, two times an understood one is two potassiums, one times this under, uh, understood one times this two is two chlorines. Two times one is two potassiums, two times one is two chlorines. Something else that you'll see in this reaction is that you'll see some S's, G's, um, you may see L's, AQ's, in parentheses after each substance. These are just showing you what state they are in at the time. For example, this potassium is in the solid state. This chlorine gas is a gas. Just like when you do a recipe, if your recipe, let's say, calls for onions, if it just said onion, your question might be, is it chopped? Is it sliced? Is it whole? Um, you need to know those things when you're doing a chemical reaction so that you know what's going to be, what's going to work best and how things um, should be laid out. You may also see, um, you could see an L in parentheses, that's liquid. You may see an AQ. AQ is aqueous, and that means it's dissolved in water. So the four symbols you will see would be liquid, aqueous, solid, and gas. That is just useful information. Now, um, some of the reactions that we'll look at won't have those sometimes for what we're doing. You don't really need it, but sometimes just all that added stuff in there can be a little confusing. Also, I want you to um, notice, and I don't have it here, but sometimes over the arrow, you may even have some special instructions. You may have a temperature. They may be, may be saying this is occurring at 400 Kelvin, or there might be a little triangle indicating that um, you're adding heat. There may be a pressure. Sometimes there, will, there may be some additional information written over that arrow that you just need to complete the reaction. Just like when you are cooking, you may need to know what temperature the oven should be at. 
So I want you to again think of chemical reactions as recipes. They're telling you exactly what you're mixing together, exactly what you're getting. Um, the coefficients in front tell you how much. Um, you know, two moles of this, one mole of this. We use the term moles when we're reading reactions, just like if you're reading a recipe, we may use cups or tablespoons or teaspoons. In chemistry, we use moles. So, for example, this is two moles of potassium plus one mole of chlorine gas yields two moles of potassium chloride. So when you see these big scary looking things, just remember it's just a recipe and you're gonna have all the skills to do all the things that you're gonna to need to do with that reaction. Now, we will be discussing, and I'm gonna break all these down into different videos, but we're gonna be looking at five main types of chemical reactions. And if you are a high school chemistry student, specifically in North Carolina, you actually have a reference table packet that um, you probably get to use on most tests. This, is, this can be found at the NCDPI website. And um, in my class, this is what I let my students use on every test, they have it for their homework. And this lists the five main types of chemical reactions and tells you how to handle each individual type within each category. This is gold right here. Um, if I told a student, hey, you can make a cheat sheet and put anything you want on it. It, it can be 100 pages long as if, if you want it to about chemical reactions. You could not make anything better than this because this is an overall generic guide and you can use this for any type of reaction that you're working with. What I'll be doing is I'll be doing a video on synthesis and going into detail on these. I'll do a video on decomposition and go into detail on these. Today you're just getting an overview, but um, my students, or any student in North Carolina, you do have a reference table packet that has this information in it. Um, the rest of you, you could find this easily online. If you're in college, you're probably going to have to have this memorized. Typically, in a college chemistry class, they're not going to give you all this, and you're just going to have to know it. So what I've got are the five main types of reactions here, and today I'm just going to point out some clues to help you... Um, be able to understand what type of reaction you're looking at if you would just happen to see it. And all of these reactions um, are balanced, and you know that because they have coefficients in the front. So the first type um, that you'll be seeing are synthesis reactions. Sometimes these are called combination reactions. Um, it just depends on who's teaching you. It's the same thing. But when I think of synthesis, I think synthesize, making something. And your big clue that you have a synthesis reaction is that you only have one product. This is the only type of reaction where you will have one product. That makes these super easy to recognize. You could have two, three, four, whatever reactants on this side, but it's always one product. Decomposition reactions are just the opposite of synthesis reactions. In decomposition reactions, you only have one reactant. And that one reactant is going to break up into two or more things. Now your question might be, well, if you're not reacting that with anything, like what's going on? Lots of things will decompose under various conditions. Um, heat might cause something to decompose, um, electricity, um, sunlight, even age can cause things to decompose. But decompositions, um, I, I think of these in two ways. I think they're the opposite of synthesis and they, they only have one reactant. And then we have single replacement reactions. In single replacement reactions, one element gets replaced with another element. And um, when we use single replacement reactions, when we get to this lesson, you're gonna be using something called the activity, ser activity series. And 
And the general rule is metals can only replace metals. There are a few exceptions to that when we're dealing with acids and water, and we'll get into that in detail on that lesson. And nonmetals can only replace nonmetals. So, for example, um, copper with silver nitrate, this copper is all by itself. And what he's going to try to do is he's going to try to kick the metal out of this combination, out of this um, combined, these combined elements, which are a compound. Because a metal will only kick out a metal, that's how I know copper's going to try to kick silver out, and it's not going to try to kick nitrate out. So um, you'll use the activity series to see if copper can indeed kick out the silver, and then I'll teach you how to predict that. I always tell my students this is kind of like the date with the third wheel. It's kind of like silver is on a date with nitrate, and they've taken copper along with them. Copper was lonely, and they said, well, just come with us, but copper's not so nice. And once they get out on the date, copper tries to kick silver out because copper wants to run off with nitrate. So I often refer to this as the date and the third wheel. You've got a date, which is an ionic compound, and then something all by itself. You can also have a um, date with a nonmetal, and in that case, the nonmetal will try to kick the nonmetal out of the compound. These are a lot of fun. Um, those are one of my favorites. And then we'll also have the double displacement reaction. This is where you have two dates. This is like the double date, and they end up switching partners. And we have a little uh, thing we use. We just put the two outers together and the two inners together. And you can see silver is going to end up paired up with chloride. And sodium is going to end up pairing with nitrate. Um, we have a little saying. We just say, outy, outy, any, any. And then you always have the right ones together. So that also is very easy to recognize because this is the reaction where you're going to have two ionic compounds on the left all the time. And the last reaction that we'll be looking at will be combustion. And combustion reactions are very easy to recognize because you always have a hydrocarbon that's any kind